just kind of wrapping up our uh, <clears throat> staff meeting here and um, just kind of putting this game to bed and getting ready to move on to the next one. But uh, it was a great win, a uh, special day in the Valley. Really proud of our staff and our team for <clears throat> just their their fight uh, to, to win the game and, you know, just their, their uh, the spirit and edge they had, you know, all week and trying to prepare for it. Uh, <clears throat> Notre Dame is a really good team. Uh, we did a lot of good things. The biggest thing is we were tough, we were physical, and uh, man, the guys were ready to go. I was just really proud of that. Um, we weren't perfect, but but we did do a lot of good things. We, we played, I thought, as complete a half as we played all year that first half, and <clears throat> got control of the game, twenty-four to nine. Uh, now we just gotta find a way to you know put the four quarters together, uh, but a lot of a lot of great things uh, in the game. Again, the toughness, the physicality. Uh, we were better fundamentally in, in, in several areas. A um, uh, lot of good things in special teams. We, the field position was huge for us. Uh, as I said last night, I mean, punt return uh, created some good field position as well. We averaged almost a first down. <clears throat> per return, nine and a half yards of return. Um, and then again, our punt team was awesome. Uh, the effort with the guys to down the ball, Aiden was outstanding. Uh, so the field position was was just really, really critical for us. Uh, defensively, we were physical, we were tough. You know, we were ready as a team that kicked our teeth in last year. And uh, I loved how we responded, even though we had a few mistakes, um, you know, a uh, couple of missed assignments. <clears throat> it contained the quarterback or, you know, carry the back on the hot blitz. Um, uh, but, man, they competed their tails off, three of 14 on third and fourth down. Uh, the difference in the game was red zone for us. I mean, I thought defensively we, we won all the situations. We won red zone. We won two-minute. We won backed up. We, we scored on defense. We, we had three takeaways. So I was really excited about that. Um, and um, just proud of those guys, man. I mean, the, the pick six was huge. Trotter was awesome. Um, and uh, – <clears throat> Again, a few things we need to definitely clean up. The goal line stand, but the red zone, we scored touchdowns in the red zone and we held them to field goals, and that was a difference in the game. So just a hard-fought uh, battle by those guys. Uh, a lot of guys out, and uh, <clears throat> guys just rallied. Offensively, you know, we averaged uh, 5.2 a carry. Moffa did, and Dominique was 5.3 a carry. Uh, but it's good to see us get the run game going, and, and I'm just really, really proud of, of Trent Howard and, and Harris Sewell um, that, you know, played every snap and, um, you know, really did a good job, man. Uh, Lenticum went in there for a few plays, too, on a critical drive. Uh, we didn't have any penalties. Uh, did a good job protecting our quarterback. We had some critical plays uh, by several different guys. Uh, but we were physical, again, better fundamentally. And <clears throat> probably the best part of the offensive day was – after the the horrendous uh, pick return to the two or three, whatever it was, man, we went on like a 12-play drive and answered with a touchdown. And I think that shows – that's a real sign of some growth and some maturity and some mental toughness to be able to respond like that, and especially Bo, you know, coming back with a really good route and a big third-down conversion. <clears throat> uh, so – a lot of good things, um, but still just had, had some, some, you know, some negative yards that we need to eliminate. A uh, couple of bad snaps, which we haven't had all year. Um, and uh, not, not quite as good as we need to be on third down. A couple of drops and, um, you know, things we need to keep working through. But all, all in all, a good team win for us. Uh, and uh, really excited about that. And, uh, you know, excited to be back in the Valley again this week. And, and uh, kind of putting all of our attention now on a, on, a, on a Georgia Tech team that's playing with a lot of confidence and, and um, you know, finding a way to win, win games as well. You know, any hey, questions? Coach, it's, <laughs> hey, Coach. Yeah, it's David Hood. First of all, congratulations on 166. Uh, big, big, big milestone. Secondly, just kind of rewatching, were the blocking schemes maybe because of the, you know, having to start some new guys, maybe a little more simplified yesterday, less – counter pulls or, or, you know, what, what was I seeing there? We ran a little bit of counter, but not as much. And the counter that we ran was a little bit more of our 
guard, tight end, counter. Uh, but mostly we we just we went with the zone and some duo stuff. <clears throat> really just tried to cover them up and, and uh, give Phil a chance to get to the second level. I thought our receivers did a really good job downfield. It was really – I mean, we had several plays where it was almost like a clinic uh, as far as how we were hatting it up and what guys were doing on the, on the second and third level. So a lot of good things in the game. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we, we did not uh, – we ran uh, mostly zone, zone stuff uh, yesterday. We ran a little bit of outside zone as well, but <clears throat> a couple counter plays. But uh, just, we just felt like – and those are things you make, you make decisions on those things game to game. Uh, sometimes it's within a game on kind of what, you're, what, what you, you feel best about and kind of where we were and, and all that stuff, we, we felt like that was the best way to go this week and just try it again just to get it started and get Phil downhill. And, and uh, man, he just did a he just did an awesome job. Just just great to see him. And then, again, some of those big runs that popped, you know, you don't get big runs if, if guys aren't doing what they need to do downfield too. We had some man – caught him in some man coverage like the first long run, you know, little things like that. Stilato coming off the ball running, taking his guy all the way to the sideline. And by the time the guy realizes that it's that, you know, he, he's not going to get the ball and he turns around, it's too late. And as opposed to, you know, coming inside or pulling up too early, things like that versus man coverage. So it was just a lot of a lot of good stuff in the game. Um, and again, can't say enough about Harris and Trent and how they stepped in. Uh, but I thought those guys competed their tails off. Tristan Lee, Putnam, Blake, uh, they did a great job of leading. You know, we communicated well. and. Um, you know, we didn't have guys coming loose and, and things like that. And I just thought, I thought, um, um, you know, for the most part, again, we were able to, you know, I, I hate we had a few negative plays, but we were we were pretty doggone efficient. Hey, Coach, it's Trevor from CUTigers.com. Um, going into the game, Notre Dame was number two in the nation in force fumbles. Uh, that, that had to be scary thought for you going in. Yeah, I mean, it don't really matter who we played this year. We, we've not done a good job taking care of the ball. And we were fortunate yesterday that, that uh, you know, we didn't lose another one or two. Obviously, we had a couple of bad snaps. Uh, ball got on the ground. And and then uh, we were lucky on the – we, we kind of screwed the option play up. That was not very well executed. Ball on the ground uh, right there, figuring that out. But uh, it really disappointed it in the game. You know, we had a chance to just – finish the game and, and uh, just just crazy uh, that the ball, you know, next thing you know, is on the ground and going back the other way right after a turnover that we just got. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's just kind of been our deal all year long and it's frustrating uh, as can be. But, man, it's, I mean, we got to Moff as our best guy. I mean, and, and we got to ride him. And he, he, he was a big reason why we won the game and, you know, uh, we handed it to him and at the end there and just did a poor job of covering the tip of the ball and keeping it up and covering it with two hands in that situation. But, um, yeah, I mean, that was – there were a lot of things that were concerning about Notre Dame. They're, they're a really good football team, really a good team, very disciplined, very well coached, and very good up front. And um, just really proud of our guys, uh, you know, for how they competed. And they've competed their tails off all year. Um, so I wasn't, I wasn't surprised by that. But all the guys that we've had out for them to rally like that was, was pretty special to watch. Have you tried to do anything different to address the fumbles? I mean, you're not making them carry the ball to class like Omar Epps in the program or, or anything like that, are you? Uh, no, we haven't done that yet. But, you know, <laughs> I mean, these aren't, these aren't middle schoolers. They know, you know, and, and it's, just been a, it's just been a frustrating thing, you know. Um, it really has, and it's been just some weird stuff uh, across the board. Um, and our best players, so you know, just I think sometimes you know it's it's um, it's middle or it goes through some cycles. So hopefully this will this will cycle its way through us and and um, you know get on out of here and head on somewhere else. Thanks, coach. Devo, this is Larry. Going back to the blocking and the running game, I know that. There's probably not a soul in the outside world who thought that y'all be able to get the push that you did against Notre Dame um, with the, you know, the injured state of your offensive line. What was the, going back to the run up to the game on the inside, 
what was the source of confidence there if you know that y'all could you could do that i'm just curious to get a window into your thinking going into the game um did you did you think that y'all could were you confident that you could do that um with with such such a patchwork situation up front yeah i mean that's why we recruited those guys i mean that's exactly what i told them i mean we didn't sign these guys to, i mean that's what they're here to do and it's time as i told harris i don't have time to wait for you to be a junior you got to go play today and and same thing with trent he's he's trent is trent is an athletic kid he's he can cover people up he's long he's got really good length he's very smart he understands things and, you know, he's played well in spots. And, you know, he his first couple of years around here, he was up and down, injuries, had all kind of missed a lot of time. And, and then he's kind of been kind of waiting his time. And, you know, sometimes you don't ever know when that opportunity is going to come. And, and when he's played, he's, he's had some good moments. And, and I think sometimes you can kind of just get settled into, well, I'm the backup. <clears throat> well, we don't need him to be the backup. We needed him to be the guy and just really – it's not that he can't do it. He just hasn't really had to be the guy. And, but I told him, I said, well, now's the time. And, uh, and, you know, we, we, we signed you because we know you can play and um, we need you, we need you to play and just, you know, really challenge those guys to, to just compete their tails off. I was really all I asked. I just, you know, just fight every single play. And, and, it, and there was a real close eye on those guys because if we struggled at all, we, we were going to empty – We were, anybody and everybody we had was going in there until we found somebody that would get the job done. And um, But that was where we were going to start, <clears throat> and uh, especially with Sadler out and not feeling like he could go. Uh, um, and, man, just cannot say enough about the job that those guys did. Putnam did a great job of pulling them together as well, great leadership. Blake, uh, Tristan. Um, you know, they, they answered the bell, <clears throat> they, they flat got after it and, um, you know, did a, did a really good job. Again, not, we weren't perfect, but we gave ourselves a chance to, uh, get it started. And when you can do that with the type of backs we have, you know, good things can happen. Do you have any feel for Sadler and sort of the <clears throat> outlook with his ankle, um, yeah, I mean, he was. He hopefully he'll hopefully he'll be able to go this week. I mean, because he was close, I and mean, he just couldn't practice really all week. But he was he was close uh, on game day. But um, you know, just you know, Trent had gotten all the work, and we'll see how it went. And uh, you know, he did. I think he did do field goal for us, Sadler. Uh, so he did get in the game. But uh, we just kind of rode with how we practiced all week, and and again, we we felt confident in what we were seeing. Those guys were confident in, in the matchup uh, once we got into it and, and uh, their confidence grew as, as the game went. So we just stuck with it. So hopefully, hopefully we'll be sad. We'll be in a, a better spot uh, come tomorrow with a week off to another week to let the thing heal a little bit. Hey, hey Debra, Chapel, um, Avion Terrell, uh, after reviewing the film, what, what stood out about what he did, obviously called in and played a ton of snaps on short notice. <clears throat> Just played with a ton of confidence, you know. Um, just a just a incredibly competitive and confident kid. I mean, which those are two attributes you better have at that position. Um, and he he just he exemplifies those things. He's a he's a knowledgeable kid. He understands the the nuances of the position. Um, and uh, and he just he doesn't play with any fear, man. I mean, he's a it was really awesome to see. He's going to be a good one. Uh, it's fun to be able to see him in that situation uh, and how he responded. Coach, like Trevor, well. again, I, uh, <clears throat> I asked you about Trey Williams um, last week, played a few snaps at NC State. Uh, he didn't he didn't play yesterday, did he? Yeah, he played, I think, four or five plays. Oh, he did. Okay, so he's got, what, two two more games he can play this season? Yeah, he's got, yeah, he's got two more games. Okay. What's been and your evaluation? The, and, and, and the postseason. He can play the postseason as well. Sure. What, what, what's been your evaluation of, of the one of the snaps he has played? Uh, it's good. I mean, we, we used him, I think, in a, maybe a couple of past situations yesterday. Uh, he's uh, – uh, it's been fun to watch him, you know, because he, he – once he kind of got back cleared and we put him on scout team because he needed to get back into some football, you know, just get a lot of snaps and get some football snaps. So he, he spent a lot of time on, on scout team, really, really has done a great job for us over there. And then – 
uh, we moved him over, I guess, a couple weeks ago to start getting him ready. Um, you know, and, and, uh, I mean, he's just a really good player. I mean, we got a good group right there. Um, you know, it's just fun to, to see him. He's got, he, he's healthy as he's been since he's been here. And so, you know, we're just trying to be smart with him and, but just working back in there. And again, we'll, we've got two games left in the postseasons if we can get there. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes and we'll make a decision, uh, you know, what, what these next two games are going to be. Uh, but it's nice. It sure is nice having that guy. That's for sure. Um, obviously, right now we're, we're riding, you know, TD and and uh, Rook. I uh, thought Peter was really good yesterday. His, his presence was felt. Cape Hart is is really coming to his own. Um, you know, Peyton Page. So we we've been fortunate for the most part to be able to you know have a good rotation and keep most of those guys healthy all year. Uh, obviously, we lost a bit early early uh, before the season. So. Um, but Trey's, uh, Trey's right where we need him to be. Hey, Coach, it's David again. With guess, Last week, let's just face it, last week was a big week, a lot of stuff going on outside the building. You're dealing with a lot of injuries and, and you know, two-game losing streak on the inside. What was – what was practice like last week? What was it like just being with your team and your coaches, um, you know, and and just kind of that that inner working uh, that that maybe prompted what we saw yesterday. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, honestly, these guys. Um, I mean, it was just a it was a tough week. I mean, certainly that. I mean, tough tough practice Tuesday, Wednesday, but you know, you got. And a lot of guys getting hurt. And so it was just, you know, you lose, you lose Marcus Tate on Tuesday. You lose Koval on Wednesday. Sadler's out. Uh, you got a lot of things going on. Shipley's going to be out. And so, you know, you kind of got what you got. And so just trying to get them to focus on what they control was the main thing last week. And um, and just and to understand that we still have enough. Let's just go compete our tails off. And, and they've done that all year. I mean, they, they've competed all year. And um, – I mean, they, they really have. We just haven't won the close game. You know, we haven't – and it's been a reflection of the turnovers. We, we got a double overtime loss, an overtime loss, and a one-score loss on the road at NC State. And uh, all of those things have the same characteristic. But the one thing that's positive in all those games, our guys have competed. They've played hard. Uh, they, they've, they've, you know, had fight. They've never quit. They've been in position to win. And, um, you know, so – I, I'm not surprised by how they fought. That's just kind of who they are, um, and that's who we are as a program. But you know, they just they just had a lot of resolve to them, and I thought they really did a good job of rallying around what we do and buying into. Hey, here's what we do have, and uh, we got enough. Listen, we got enough. Uh, that's we've got depth, and we got enough to still go win this game. And let's focus on what it's going to take to win the game. And, you know, had a good week of practice and and uh, guys, you know, handled their business. The uh, biggest thing is, is we won the game because we won field position. We won the turnover margin. That's why we won the game. Um, if, we, if we were plus in the turnover margin on those other games, we won those too. Uh, but we haven't been. And that's the first time we've had three games all year we're, we're plus in the margin. And that's been a difference for us. But their, their competitiveness, their will to win, um, you know, I think, their physicality and toughness, all that's been there all year long. Um, we just, we just, you know, have grown up. I think mean, we've gotten a little stronger, a little more mentally tougher because of some what we've had to go through. And uh, you hate having to deal with some adversity, but as I always say, if you made the right stuff, it'll make you better. And you know, I thought um, that'll be a that'll be one of those games that'll that'll really serve as a great teaching tool and a great example to a lot of these guys for years to come because you never know when your opportunity is going to come. And, you know, you look at Trent, you look at Harris, you look at Colin Griffin, uh, those guys having to step up, you know, Hamp Green, uh, you got you got guys all over the place. Uh, so just proud of them. I uh, really am. And, uh, again, hard-fought win against a very, very good football team. And just I'm happy for them to be able to, you know, taste a little bit of success because they, they've worked hard all year. Coach, since you just mentioned uh, Hemp Green, I, I was going to ask you about him. I mean, he's always been sure-handed. He made that great one-handed catch. 
but after he broke a couple tackles on in, on that first punt return, seems like he's he's uh, kind of gaining in swagger and confidence. I mean, how much can a game like that uh, really boost his confidence going forward? And has he kind of solidified his spot as your punt returner? Yeah, that's what happens when you play and you have a little success. Your confidence grows. And, you know, um, you know, I think that's part of Trent and Harris as well. All of a sudden, you start playing and you hadn't played all night, and you get a little have a little success, man. Next thing you know, your confidence grows. Hey, you can do a lot of great things um, if you've got some talent. And, you know, Hamps is, Hamps a grinder. He's a tough kid, man. And, you know, we lost Antonio. Tyler Brown has, has been, you know, battling. And, all, and then he put the ball on the ground a couple times. And, and then, you know, Shipley gets hurt. And, and uh, you know, just kind of uh, – Cole Turner goes out. He was another guy that was – that we've been working and, so uh, Hamp's kind of always been our steady Eddie, and we just trust him. You know, we really trust him to go possess the ball. And and he's and he's got you know, as you saw, he's got some quickness, and and he will get the ball north south. Um, I was really really proud of him, and he's just kind of settled us down, and done a really really nice job um, in that part for us, and and uh, possessing the ball. And I thought I thought the punt return team and as a whole really competed their tails off. Um, and so both sides, our punt team flipped the field all day and did a great job with coverage, great job, job with down in the ball, et cetera. And then our punt return team averaged almost a fir first down per return. So, you know, the field position between those two teams and winning that battle was definitely a difference in that game, you know, keeping them on a long field uh, and keeping us, you know, on a couple of short fields. Uh, Deb, this is Larry again. Uh, on the topic of Tyler from Greenville, uh, what type of example, or I guess what does it mean when you have a guy who goes all week, doesn't practice, and then pushes through, showing that mental, mental and physical toughness, and he's a freshman? Uh, I'm just curious what that means when a, a guy like that sort of sets that type of example for the rest of the team. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is football. Football is a hard game, man. It's hard. It takes a toll on you mentally, physically, emotionally. It really does. I mean, it's a hard game. And, you know, he's just and, – and not everybody's built the same. You know, some guys can push through things and some guys, you know, it's just not how they're wired. Um, uh, but he's one of those guys that, man, that dude, I mean, he's, he's going to do everything he can to play. That's just, that's just how he's wired. And, uh, you know, he's, he's battled – all year um and uh, <clears throat> you know he's just gotten himself ready we and, but as a to be a freshman and to not be able to take all the reps during practice just shows you you know how hard he prepares how smart he is and uh you know just but he is a tough tough kid he is a tough kid and i'm, I'm glad we got him for three more years he's he's gonna be a really good player um you know just Excited for him to have an all, you know, he didn't get, he wasn't here in the spring. So I'm excited for him to have a true off season and <laughs> get, you know, you forget we, we don't have Cole, we don't have Antonio. Uh, so this kid's been able to just blossom. We, we, we don't have mice and Kelly, you know, he had to have surgery. He's done for the year. Uh, those are guys that, and then we got a couple great ones. We think coming in in January, uh, Ronan has really made some progress. I mean, we, we, we got a, it doesn't feel like it right now because we're we're battling through some things, but man, we're we're getting we're gaining some really really good experience. Getting Salado, the, the experience that he's got because you know obviously for two years he's done nothing, he's not been available, and so for him to be able to finally have a, a season, his first season since he's coming to Clemson, to really be able to play, and he's really not a hundred percent healthy, but he's he's a tough kid too. Um, I'm really proud of him. So we've we've been able to. You know, we've got good depth, but not anywhere near what we'll have this spring once we get we get all these horses ready to roll. That was Chapel again. Um, how's Tyler Venables progressing? And uh, do you think y'all can still stick to the plan of him maybe coming back as the year uh, wraps up? Yeah, he's good, man. I mean, he could play today uh, mentally. I mean, he's he's kind of been like a player coach for us all year as he's worked through his um, – you know, get ready, uh, you know, phase and rehab process, but he's uh, uh, on track, you know, so I'm just, we're just kind of waiting on the, on the medical people to, to clear him and then um, he'll be, he'll be ready to go. So 
uh, we'll see where he is this week and uh, go from there. Anybody else for coach? All right, thank you, coach. Thanks, coach. Okay, appreciate it, guys. <laughs>